right away anyways. Stefano just needed a quick uh, moment. Good luck, have fun being called. And we're going to go into Crystal Cavern. To the top right-hand side, our green Terran player represent Black Knight Eastwater. We were awesome enough to stop by the stream the other day and say hello. Actually, even dropped in a donation. Shout out to those guys. He's representing Black Knight Esports. Acheron, Green Terran playing the upper right hand side. One of the up and, again, an up and comer in the European scene. Apparently, he's been one to watch out for lately. And just to see what he can bring us today as we have to the bottom left the Pink Zerg player. Game is Origin Stefano. It's been an interesting tournament in general for me to set up. Obviously, we've not been able to get many Koreans because we're running an EU server tournament. We've not been able to really get many NA players because the time zones have been a bit funky. A lot of people are GSL versus the world. A lot of people are on holidays. It's a 20-player event. So we've really had to kind of invite some new and different players this time around. And Akron, I think this is the first time I've seen him in a long time playing in one of my tournaments. I mean, we, we had, he used to play in a lot of the open tournaments that I ran. Uh, so that was always a lot of fun to kind of watch and to enjoy. So, yeah, kind of really cool to see uh, Acheron back playing because I really feel like he, he was one of these players that was, again, on the level of being a breakthrough player. And then he dropped off for a while. Currently 17 years old, but only by a couple of weeks. So he's about a year older than uh, Clem, about a year older than Raynor. Again, not quite on the level as well just yet, but definitely another youngster to watch out for in the world of StarCraft 2 moving forward. And Crystal Cavern by Mavis here is going to be our first map of two. Sudden Awakening, we're going to see another missile turret map after this one as well. So that's going to be coming up. As you do see, this SCV just going to be heading towards the uh, upper right-hand side of the map. So SCV going to be heading back home. Early Scout just says hatch gas pool, and that just means he knows he can send the Reaper across without any real need or any real issues, etc. So that's what he's going to be setting up for right now, as we do see a second barracks coming down behind this. So this will be a 2-1-1 from Acheron. He will look to be very heavy on the Marine drop. He'll be very reliant on that to deal damage and to clean up creep, and to slow the Zerg player down to lead him into the mid-game. So very Marine-focused opening here from our Terran player for Game 1. Again, every player gets two pull-up maps against every other player. And also want to point out today, we've not mentioned it yet, the $700 best players used in the map prize pool. Uh, which is a uh, $700 which will be split amongst the best players using the new maps. So far we've had a couple of contenders and uh, some people kind of feel like Sol just flying his uh, flying his uh, medevacs into the missile turrets. Uh, it was a pretty great contender. But if you see anyone using a cool strategy or cool position on the map or, you know, just using the map in an interesting way based on how the map is set up, then do consider letting us know and uh, they'll be considered for that $700 potential prize. So... That's what's going to be going on. It's going to be coming down to a vote as well. So far, I think one of the cool examples we had on the first day was Puck using a very air-focused strategy on a close-by air map that worked wonderfully. Just little things like that. True using his lurkers to kind of keep Raynor pinned in on one of the maps as well. There's a, there's a few different ones as uh, right now Acheron struggling a little bit. It, it's not very obvious here, but this is a ledge that Reaper can go up. But I mean, it has to go hop, hop. It doesn't just hop all the way up. It does a double jump. Which means it can't jump up and down as quickly or easily as usual in and out of the main. That makes it a little bit weaker. And it also sort of subsidizes the power of Reapers on this map otherwise. Uh, because they do take that little extra time to jump down. So they will be in range of a Queen or Roaches for a little bit longer. In case you were thinking about mass Reaper playing. Sad, because of how open the side of the map is. Or side of the main is. Now we kind of know what we're expecting to see from the Terran player when we look back at his main base. The Stimpak's already on the way up. We know he's heading in towards this 60 Marine drop. And that Factory and Starport just getting ready to go. So Factory and Starport getting rolling. As we uh, head on into this and uh, continue through. What's up Jala Veliki? This is only our third game of the day. It's still only our third game of the day, so we've not had uh, many just yet. And actually, you've got your map coming up in the next uh, next game, Sudden Awakening, coming in for map number two. So, you are right on time, bro. Right on time. Except Mavis as well, our map maker of this map in the chat too. Obviously, these uh, map makers have an iteration phase after this. They get a chance after the tournament and after seeing pros play on their map. They get the chance to go and make changes and to make edits before the public voting opens. And of course, do make sure to keep in mind the public voting phase and make sure you get involved if you enjoy the contest. There's no reason for you not to get involved. Think about which maps you like, look at the changes that get made, maybe the maps you don't like, the issues you have with them get fixed. Make sure you vote publicly, starting... Uh, I, get, I, I actually, I'm not going to lie, I don't know the date exactly, but it's probably about a week and a half or so, two weeks maybe from now. 
Anyways, if you keep general track of StarCraft 2, you know, stuff, you'll you'll see it around on our StarCraft on Team Liquid. But do remember, you can publicly vote for that, as well as our public vote of the best usage of the maps play. It's going to be exciting. Anyways, a few Marines looking to drop off onto this high ground here. Queens and Lings gathering from Stefano. And we do see Acheron just going to throw down a few Marines now, as we do have these setting up. And they're going to get ready to push on forwards in towards this creep spread. Again, a couple of creep teamers are being pushed forwards at the moment, so he wants to try and start cleaning this up. There's a scan, only gets one creep teamer here. He got that active one, obviously, but only gets one behind it. The Lings and Queens are a lot, you know, a big threat at the moment, as we do see Stefan already taking a fourth hatchery. I mean, the four bases on this map. Comes in in the standard section as well, so it's not meant to be super macro -y, which I don't think it is. Very exposed, back in the natural, very droppable. Dead airspace over here, and then you can hit here, here, or here. So it is a very, you know, it's, it's a map that's easy to take bases, but they're not, you know, they're not without their issues. There is ways to abuse them. As we do see the uh, Marines and Medivacs just gathering up overhead. Well, Bane and Ness is on its way down in the main base, and stimming forwards, we do see one of the Queens taking a little bit of damage. Marines just continuing to pull back there slightly, as Stefano should be pretty uh, okay with that at the moment. So just a small second while I host up another game on the other screen. Again, we've got a couple matches playing at the same time right now. Uh, we will uh, have all the games casted. Seven matches are going to be cast live, three games casted from replays at the end. And we just have those already playing to, again. Just minimize the amount of time the players have to sit around and, uh, you know, be present. Just to make their day a little bit shorter rather than slogging it out with us. Just in case some games really do drag on. Four medivacs now loading up here, and with the marine count obviously rising. It's uh, going to be... Continue. To uh, look a little bit scarier for the Zerg. Obviously that's where Balin's going to be... To, uh, going to be... Uh, coming into a little bit more kind of trouble, as the Banes are much more needed. Plus two attack starts up from Acheron, as we will see the 2-2 two -two melee upgrade starting up from Stefano. That infestation pit dropping down as well, so... I like this though, look at this. These Marines get behind the mineral line. The issue is the Banes are able to start coming forwards. Nice lift up though, he doesn't actually lose that many Marines. And with the damage done, I think Acheron could be fairly happy with this for the moment. Now the Hive starting up from Stefano in the main. We do see 2-2 two -two upgrades starting from Acheron as well. And the melee upgrades from Stefano are just about halfway done. So, still moving through with those melee upgrades now. As we have a few more Crypt Teamers continue to press forwards. Crypt Teamers coming all around the map. I mean, the Crypt's just kind of insane, especially considering it's a, you know, a 2 one, one opening. This Crypt should be a little bit more contained. Now, it's not a huge map, remember, as well. So, that will help the Crypt kind of look like it's crazy. But in reality, it's just a couple scans away from Machi being much more under control. It is just giving Stefano this freedom, however, to run away up the left-hand side of the map. A fifth base already being thrown on down here. And, well, another command center will be thrown down here from our Taran is... Well, with 2-2 on the way, obviously his big push will generally be 2-2 focused. Looking to hit before the Hive tech comes into play. That Hive looking to finish shortly again. And a scanner rid of a few creep tumors here and then skirmishing slightly, not losing too many Marines. Generally, the idea of the Terran army is to retain as much as possible. The more units you retain, the better it's going to be, uh, the better of a time you're going to have. Now, you do see Stefano is just going to have an overlord just off to the side here. You see Marines coming in and picking up another Zergling. Stefano, in general, I mean, in the next set of upgrades starts, so he's already getting his Hive Tech into play. Not actually going in towards anything like Ultraist or anything, though. I mean, he's just playing this Masterling Bane style, and it's just so Stefano. From way back on Wings of Liberty, it was, uh, you know, this was a map which was... Uh, he was a player who would always kind of play those fast upgrades, Ling Bane, and then into Infestors, and he really kind of pioneered that, pioneered that style. So really kind of cool to... See him just playing Masling Vein again and again, and he has been doing this for the last year or so too. He's been very much so an advocate of this style compared to just kind of playing Ling Vein Hydra and the rest of it. What's up, Dovin Wolf in the chat with the 700 bits, dude? Thank you so much for the 700 bits. Appreciate the support. Thank you very much. It means a lot, bro, and hope you're having a great day as we see Lings trying to jump on towards that command center again, but 
not actually going to be successful. So they're going to be pushed away off to the left-hand side. Now you do see the adrenal glands is, uh, again, just on the way up here from Stefano right now. So still coming on through. Marines, tanks pressing forwards. Macron just sieging those up as we'll see a couple of these troop teamers being cleaned out. This is the issue. He can't look to hit with 2-2. So what does he do here? Maybe try and get towards a fourth base play defensively and just start moving in towards that later game where you're maxed out with your own free free. Getting the obliterators and goes to maybe deal with an ultra's tech switch here. There's a couple different options. I mean, he's not kind of completely doomed. And he's cleaning out a lot of this creep now on this the top side, actually. So it will open up one pathway for him to potentially move through into the middle. More Zerglings being cleaned out here. Again, both players maxing out as Stefano will finally get rid of these Marines. But here we go, Acheron sees the opportunity. And this is a map which has these very interesting pathways in the center, which allows for Stefano to obviously come in from different angles. But it's always going to be through choke points. And I love this little ridge along here, because actually Acheron can use that right now to push through. And he has really kind of created space for himself on the map in the last few moments. And now he's going to get himself maybe a Queen extra, starting to split against a couple of Banes out of here. A little bit of a lift up as well. Marauder's now dropping back down. Bane to the right hand side, the wall off. It's not actually a full wall off. Oh, the Banes are going to crash in anyways. Bio's already stimming home. The SCVs will split away. It's a lot of Link Bane from Stefano, though. And Marauders are doing a good job tanking a lot of the Bane and connections. Honestly, not the best of run buys. Stefano, meanwhile, takes a big fight in the center. Again, it's difficult with the way that this map is uh, set up, but he's able to kind of start pushing forwards. A lot of his uh, supply, though, is in reinforcements. 100 plus Zerglings in production for a moment there. That Terran player will survive, and may not have the momentum to push forwards, may not have the units to push forwards, but he'll survive, and Stefano doesn't have a ton of gas. Okay, that's because he actually already started the 43 Bane lanes. Okay, so Banes are on the way through. All right, then. We're going to be seeing a few more Banes continue to come on in. Biostims once again. Tanks will start to fire. The Marines, the Marauders continue to pull backwards here. The Banes are going to crash in. The Bio will surround it. That's a GG in Crystal Cavern. Stefano takes his... So let's go into this and let's introduce our players down uh, to the upper right-hand side. On the right-hand side of the turret wall, it is our green Terran, Acheron. And he is going up against the red Zerg to the upper left side. It is Stefano. Not really upper left of the entire map, but on the top side of the turrets. So again, these turrets basically just say, yep, yeah, don't fly between these bases. That's kind of cool. And uh, there's a few more on the map over here. These kind of maybe say, you know, it's a little bit more difficult to push through this area with units until a little bit later when you're able to clean these out. And, you know, if you, you know, again, also kind of here, similar sort of idea. Bottom left hand side is interesting as well. It kind of creates maybe a bit of extra protection for the gold base until those turrets get cleaned out. It also just stops you rallying drops right through the corner of the map. So, you know, you only really have this sort of area to drop well or to move medevacs through. I do think that's one of the issues for Terran players in general. And ah, Acheron's going to throw down Proxy Barracks. Okay, well, he's going to try and Proxy Racks his way through this. Game number two. So, uh, yeah, I mean, as we uh, get going in this, again, I just want to reiterate how we let the maps be selected here. So, every series in this best of two format will see six maps set per series. We generally will be setting maps which have been played less, and we will generally also set maps again which are, you know, which maybe have shorter games, for example, right now, Sudden Awakening, if this ends on Proxy Racks and not much of a game, it's not as useful to the map making. So we'll generally be putting it into more map pools again today to make sure maybe, or to try and get another play and so on. Obviously, there's uh, only so much we can do. I mean, it's still a tournament. These players still want to win, even though it's the map contest. They uh, they play to win, and sometimes Proxy Racks is uh, the way to do it. So here you go. Proxy Racks are down. And a few Marines are going to be gathering together. A couple of Queens on the way up from Stefano. Now, his open here so far, just hatch gas pool, nothing too out of the ordinary. As you see, Overlords just moving themselves around and having to think as to where they might want to go. Now, Stefano is moving towards the third hatch, and he just now sees the SCVs, so he really doesn't know about this, but Lings are already up and running. That's how late these SCVs, or that's how long these SCVs have waited before moving forwards. The Marines arriving right behind them means that they will be able to protect the SCVs. The first bunker coming up. Stefano will start to respond with a spine crawler. So he's already uh, setting this up and getting ready to go. 
Now, we do see Siphon obviously wants to try and maybe push into this a little bit. A few Marines already fighting, getting a couple of Link kills. One SCV will go down, but he will get a Queen in return, Acheron. So he's getting a Queen pickup right now. He loses the SCV, though, so no bunker for Acheron as well. What can he do without a bunker? His Marine count's still going to be pretty high because he is playing off of four barracks at the moment. So four racks coming through. Hatchery may fall. Against, a, against four racks, I think you can lose this hatchery without it being too much of an issue. Spine Cross on a push on forwards. First Spine will go down. No transfuse. Keeps it alive. Lings will push in and protect it. He needs to kill the Spine Crawl, I think, and he'll get it. Next Spine Crawl is going to push a bit further forwards as well, but these Lings keep dropping an Acheron. Might have enough here. The Queen will fall. The Spine should go down before it's able to get too many shots off. And Stefano's investment into this defense has been costly. GG. And that is going to be Acheron taking his...